Hi, we are continuing with heat engine cycle examples and in this video we'll cover Stirling cycle. Stirling cycle is an interesting example. It's the idealized cycle for the Stirling engine which isn't as common as the auto engine or diesel engine but it is the only example of, um, of I guess you could call it external combustion engine. Let me show you the Wikipedia page for the Stirling cycle. So this is the Wikipedia page for the Stirling cycle. And there's an interesting history behind the Stirling engine. You can read about it on your own. Let me scroll down here for the cycle. So this is the idealized Stirling cycle. And you can kind of see what I mean. It is not an internal combustion engine on the cycle itself. Here the curves, they are not adiabatic, they are isothermal. So the idealization with the Stirling engine is that as the gas expands, it's in thermal equilibrium with the thermal reservoir. The heat isn't coming from a single combustion within the engine, it's coming from an external source that's continuously transferring heat. So uh, this is the kind of idealized model. But we have an actual working lecture demo model, the video of which you can see elsewhere. All right, so for the purpose of current analysis, we are analyzing this. So we'll start from here, isochoric heating, isothermal expansion, isochoric cooling, and then isothermal contraction. All right, I copied the PV diagram over so I don't have to read over everything. Let me label the points I'll refer to. Point A, we'll start from here. B, C, and D. And let me label some parameters that we'll use to define and compare this cycle with the other cycles we've been covering. So we need a temperature for this upper isotherm. I could call this TH that matches what we've been using. And we need a temperature for this lower isotherm, and I can call that TL for lower temperature. All right, I think I only need two more parameters, the high volume and the low volume. All right, I guess that's uh, everything. So we are asking the same question as before, that is, what are the network done and the heat transfers? And as before, let me write down all the formulas we'll need. There's the ideal gas law, the first law of thermodynamics, and for monatomic gases, the expression for the internal energy, and the adiabatic relationship. All right, that's it. Um, we've done this enough. All right, so let's get started. The first process is isochoric heating from A to B. Since it's isochoric, the work done is zero. Nice and easy. So the first law says that the heat transferred from A to B is equal to the change of internal energy. We've done this many times before, so I first wrote it using the expression for the internal energy and then rewrote it in terms of pressure and volume, since it's more useful. All right, now the isothermal expansion, B to C. Since it's isothermal, it says that the change of internal energy is zero. And the heat transferred, is equal to the work done, which we have to calculate by integrating pressure times volume from B to C. Um, we've done this many times, so let me write down the result here. If you want to find the, the process, you can go look at the video for the Carnot cycle or the video for the toy model too. All right, make sure that result looks correct. One check we can do for both of them is that they are positive. And it should be in both the steps. In both cases, the heat is flowing into the system, either to fuel the rise in the internal energy or to fuel the work done without any decrease in the internal energy. All right, let's keep going. Uh, isochoric cooling from C to D. This is the reverse of A to B. So the work done is still zero. And the heat transferred is the change of internal energy, which is going to turn out to be negative this time. PD is smaller than PC, so this is negative. All right, the final step, the isothermal contraction, D to A, completing the cycle. As before, change in the internal energy is zero. 
That's what isothermal means. So the heat transfer has to be equal to the work done. And I'm just going to write down the result here. Hopefully you can double check that it's correct. And check that it's negative as it's supposed to be. All right, that's it. Uh, let's write down the network and the heat transfers and see what we can get from that. So work is only done along the curves BC and DA. So adding those two together, I'm going to use the logarithm algebra to turn this into the same thing as this. You get the following result for network. If you remember the result from Carnot cycle, this uh, is the same result as the Carnot cycle result. If you are surprised, I hope you are not surprised because in the Carnot cycle, the work done along the adiabatic paths canceled out. So whether it's adiabatic or isochoric, it kind of doesn't make a difference since they cancel out to zero either case. Now, this is not the Carnot cycle and the difference mainly comes in the amount of heat transferred. For the Carnot cycle, for the adiabatic processes, there was zero heat transferred. But for isochoric process, there is heat transferred. So let me write those down. We are going to need them for comparison. The heat input is the sum of the heat transfers from A to B and B to C, which is the same term as the one you see in Carnot cycle, and an additional term that comes from our isochoric path. And let me write down the heat output making sure I'm writing it down as a positive quantity. And once again, it has the same term as the Carnot cycle and an additional term that comes from the isochoric path. All right, so these are our results that we'll use for comparison in our summary video. Oh, I forgot one thing. Those pressures, um, they are not given, but they can be determined from what's given. Let me just write them down. For all of them, we have the temperature and volume at those points. So it's a matter of using the ideal gas law to write down what the pressure is in terms of those. Um, so I guess I need pressure at all four points. Pressure at point A, point B, point C, and finally point D. All right, so when it comes to comparison, we'll just use these to work out pressures numerically rather than Working at the algebra because, once again, there's no real payoff here. The expressions don't simplify. All right, so that's everything. And I guess the next video should be the summary video. We'll put all this together in the summary video and kind of see what we can take away from comparing these four realistic heat engine cycles. Until then, bye.